So one of the admin who replied told me that I might need to pay extra school, I might need to pay school fees to return. Uh, hey, God, then Grammy. At this point, my heart was beginning to palpitate. I'm like, these people should not tell me story and tell me, okay, you know what, it's been a long time. Your admission, don't enter voicemail, you know. So Pam, how are you guys doing? About this video, yeah, when I knew this was something was when I received this DM. When I received this DM by someone asking, asking about returning to studies, it actually reconfirmed the fact that I needed to make this video. I knew, okay, that people who also are in these shoes, and it would be a good idea for me to share my own experience. I'll be talking today about how I was able to rejoin, that is, return to my MSc studies after deferring as an international student five years ago. So, some of the kind of questions you might have in mind, or a person who has deferred, or who is deferring, or who plans to defer, will have in mind is, if I get to defer my studies, are there possibilities for me to return to study? How long can I stay on deferral status? And when I'll be returning, would I have to pay new school fees to rejoin? What is the process of coming back after deferring a course? All of these questions from my own experience I'll be sharing with us today. So firstly, what is even deferral? Deferral of course, right? Here in the UK, you could be studying and at some point they have this room or allowance for you to defer your course in case circumstances arrive beyond your control and you need to push your studies, go sort it out, you know, and then come back. And they get to term it severe adverse circumstance. So here in my own school is Hertfordshire, right? In Hertfordshire, there's this form called SAC form. I will not go too much into details about the process of deferral because I already have a video that has addressed the topic. So I will leave it in the description. Do well to check it out. So just jumping straight into it into the topic of today which is talking about how to return successfully to studies i was permitted to defer my course after filling the sac form that's the severe adverse circumstance form due to the fact that i was heavily pregnant and i was due to have my baby so that was circumstance enough for them to grant me a deferral. So it's not just pregnancy. In case you're a male, right, who cannot get pregnant. If you're ill, say serious illness that can that is going to hinder you from continuing your studies, or say a case of where somebody loses their loved one, say a parent or a sibling, these circumstances are serious enough or considered serious by the school to grant you, you know, some time off your education. So given that I was granted that successfully, I am permitted to come back to my studies whenever I deem fit. Now think about it. I was a student then. I was on a student visa. If you are on a student visa, they even let you know because there's what they call the student International Student Advice Center. So the Student Advice Center made me know that if I get to defer and want to return, I'm gonna no. First of all, if I'm deferring, I'll have to defer because that is the that that is the term and condition. While you're deferring, you have to return to your home country, and then when you are ready to come back, it's either you continue from your home country, maybe online studies, or you make another visa application for the school to bring you back in. That's quite a process, which might not even be guaranteed, but it all just depends on the circumstances. So in my own case, I didn't go back to my home country. I had my child here, essentially regularized my stay here in the UK before attempting to rejoin. This brings me to the next point. When you are rejoining, when going back, as I was going back, one of the first things you should have in mind or just know that the school is going to require of you is your current status. So if you're sending them an email as I was reaching out, let me just tell my story and then you can apply it to your own circumstance, right? Or see how you can follow through from my own steps, kinda. Okay, so in my own case, yeah, now I have regularized my stay. I'm no longer on a student visa and I'm not back in my home country. I have found my feet, you know, kinda here in the UK. I knew I was in a good place to return to studies. So this was during the pandemic, right? I sent an email, I reached out to the school and told them, 
hey school or hey admin i'm ready to return to studies what is the step going forward so the one of the first thing the school asked me is right what's your status are you still here in the uk have you gone back home so i had to narrate that i am currently here in the uk and i do have my paper sorted i wouldn't be needing a visa essentially they do not have to sponsor me from my home country back here that we can just hit it from here if they want me to even come to the school physically i will come given the pandemic was just easing this was in the beginning of 2022 communication was primarily online so i had to sit back and wait for their reply so eventually about two days later i got a reply ask requesting for a proof of my stay here in the uk so i had to scan and send forth to them my my current resident status i even went ahead and forwarded my previous um results because i'd already completed semester a and b of my course so what was left off is my dissert or was my dissertation that was what i needed to return to complete so after i sent off this it took about one week for one of the admins to reach back to me telling me to contact my program leader i'm like oh my goodness the back and forth i sent a message to the program leader i received an automatic email by you know from program leader saying they were you know off on sabbatical leave or something like that that should send an email to another person i'm like hey god damn grammy at this point my heart was beginning to palpitate i'm like these people should not tell me story and tell me, okay, you know what, it's been a long time. Your admission, don't enter voicemail, you know. But I still kept fingers crossed, my heart was. But thankfully, I still kept hope alive and I kept messaging, follow back message. So within the space of um, the back and forth, took about one month, yeah, three, two, three weeks to four weeks for everything to get set. So eventually, after referral, referral, I was following email copying ceasing and ceasing and copying everybody everybody i've sent me message before to so the next person i'm supposed to message i was just telling them that please what's the step i intend to come back look at when i deferred look at the reason why and now i am ready and so one of the admin who replied told me that i might need to pay extra school i might need to pay school fees to return and then they told me that they're going to calculate it according to the unit of my deferral that's no sorry according to the unit of my um dissertation so whatever charge or fee is attached to my dissertation which is what i said is left off i might have to pay in fees i'm like <laughs> but i'm like okay no problem I, I i just said to myself when i replied them eventually that i don't mind paying fees but when i did defer they said given i was granted a deferral i have no pending course i passed all of my courses one time i do not have to repeat any course so there is no need i do not see any need to, uh, this this is me challenging them now i do not see any need for me to pay a school fees because y'all asked me to go and that it's in the student rule. So why am I gonna have to pay fees? So the person, another person who is part of that um, team, finance, the student finance team said, okay, I should give them some time to get this sorted with my school of, um, my business school, and then they'll get back to me. Hmm. I waited though. <laughs> After like, I think almost two weeks, almost this process long. After like two weeks, I got a message from the program leader directly. I you know what now, the program leader, I knew then when i was still studying first batch is different from the program leader now so hey this new program leader told me no problem that she has gone through my records and stuff and she has seen all of my results seeing you know the track record of my uh, my attendance and everything everything's on point no carryovers nothing so good news is i will not have to pay new school fees i can just fill the rejoin form and start hey i'm like this god me Marco, no the tire Jesus. So they did send me. So they did send me um the rejoin form. I filled it up very excited. I was just imagining graduating, imagining finishing, getting back. Oh gosh, because this is a dream for me. So I filled up the rejoin form, I haven't sent off every other document necessary, which primarily was my, you know, stay, my current stay, and my student ID, yeah? That's my student number, my full name. Primarily, that was it. And that was how I got back to it. I got a message, I got an email from my supervisor because I was being assigned a supervisor for my project, yeah, my dissertation. <laughs> and then they filled me in, you know, signed me up for Canvas. There's something they call Canvas where they get to share student information 
information, share assignments, upload assignments, school newsletters and stuff. So just like before, every school information started, you know, coming to my email, boom, boom, boom. And, you know, I, I was, they, they filled me in, you know, they just incorporated me in like that. I joined my dissertation group because we were shared in group to work with our supervisor and I was, we were attending virtual meetings online at that time right it's talking about how to begin writing our chapters chapter one chapter two chapter three chapter four chapter five i was it was a very exciting period so to crown it off if, if you leave me i'll just keep going on and on so it was very exciting because i didn't have to pay no fees i got in despite the time frame the long time frame i still entered in smoothly without any issue and then everything progressed from there towards my completing of my dissertation, writing and all of the process, all of the strenuous dissertation writing, research and all, and I was able to submit successfully and graduated in December of 2022 from 2017 to the glory of god so if you are in this state or if you are thinking about you know going through this route remember to watch how i deferred in conjunction with this video do not forget to leave in the comment section your opinion your questions and your contribution because it's definitely going to help somebody i'm wishing you the best that everything works out smoothly for you i'll see you in the next video